Thank the chairman. Uh, thank the attorney general for being here before us today. On October 21st, 2021, before this committee, I ask you about Mr. Scott Smith, a father in Loudoun County, Virginia, who was arrested at a school board meeting where he questioned the rape of his daughter in a bathroom in the public school there. You said at the time you were unfamiliar with the case. Are you now, yes or no? I'm only familiar to the extent I've read about it in the press. You sent a memo on October 4th, 2021, directing the FBI and U.S. Attorney offices to address, quote, harassment, end quote, of school boards. Yes or no? I sent a memo to address violence and threats of violence in connection with school personnel. Directed at school boards. Not directed at school boards, directed at school personnel, school administrators. Throughout the country members. as a priority for the federal government, for the United States Attorney's Office. That followed a letter on September 29th, 2021 from the National School Board Association to President Biden and emails from the National School Board Association Director Chip Slavin to the White House in which the White House asked for specific threats. And one of the examples was Scott Smith. Subsequent to our hearing two years ago, 26 states left the National School Board Association and Slavin resigned on November 23rd of 2021. Last week, Mr. Smith was pardoned by Governor Youngkin. Do you think the governor was correct, yes or no? Pardon authority belongs to the governor. You don't have an opinion on whether the governor was correct? I don't know the facts of the case, so I'm not in a position to make Have you correct. rescinded the memo that you issued in 2021, yes or no? What we're discussing Have occurs, you rescinded the memo, yes or no? What we're discussing here occurs... Does the memo still exist? Is it still going, yes or no? Has it been rescinded? The memo was uh, intended to have meetings 30, within 30 days. Has the it been rescinded? The 30 days have finished. Nothing has happened in more than a year and a half with respect to that but it memo. has not been rescinded. It has There's not been pulled back. There's nothing to rescind. Despite evidence that has come out from the National School Board Association, commissioned report that White House officials discussed this with DOJ more than a week before the letter was sent. The NSBA apologized. Have you apologized? Yes or no? I've testified seven times since that um, original um, memo That's the first time you're out. back here since we talked about it. I'm sorry? It's the first time you're back here in front of us. Have you apologized for putting that memo out that implicated Scott Smith as a domestic terrorist, something the governor of Virginia has now pardoned him from all of these accusations? The memo said nothing about him, nothing about parents being terrorists, nothing about attending school boards. So the answer is it's not been rescinded and you haven't apologized for it. The answer Again, is that's that not an labeling a Labeling an American citizen a domestic terrorist in a memo and referring to it and in a memo that's built on the back of that. But now we had this uh, compliments being driven to the Civil Rights Division. Let's talk about Mark Houck in Pennsylvania, a father who was arrested with heavily armed federal and local law enforcement in front of his wife and children. This after Mark Houck's lawyers had said he would appear voluntarily. Local authorities investigated, found no case. Mark Houck was arrested by the FBI for FACE Act violations. The jury met for an hour. Houck was acquitted. Now, when I was in federal court, I don't remember that being my result very often. In fact, I don't remember happening at all, where we went, it, took it to a jury, and it was acquitted after an hour. Did you investigate this or in question the United States attorney why they wasted resources for such an obvious result? And can you explain, yes or no, that that was a good use of the Department of Justice's authority? The Ju Justice Department respects the jury's verdict. The decisions in that case were made by agents and prosecutors on the ground. Are you concerned that enforcement of the FACE Act has been biased towards pro-lifers over anti-life protesters, 126 to four? by our count, and we're asking information to be able to track down the information of such prosecutions, but 126 times against pro-lifers versus four times for people who dare to question the issue of life. I've so I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave that out there just to say that is the Civil Rights Division at play. Meanwhile, we've got, uh, you know, the uh, very liberal progressive groups being targeted as well. Senator Cruz and I sent a letter for you, to you asking for information about how the FBI informant had gone to a liberal group's uh, pro-life meeting, and yet we didn't get any response from you. So I'd ask if you would respond to our letter that we sent back in March asking about F FBI infiltrating such a meeting. I don't know what you're referring to, but I will ask the Office of Legislative Affairs to look into this letter. Thank you. Finally, our tax cases require approval by main justice no matter what district has venue, yes or no? Do tax I, cases as a general just, matter require approval by main justice say, no matter what district has venue, yes or no? It depends on the circumstances in the example that it, I know is it you're generally referring speaking, to. Generally speaking, yes. Not Since main it, justice runs tax division, yes or no? Main justice runs the tax division. 
In the Hunter Biden case, I assured Mr. Weiss that That's not he, what I'm asking about. I didn't ask it. I haven't mentioned that guy's name. I didn't. I very simply asked a very simple question. Okay. Do tax cases require approval by Maine Justice? Most, as, a, as a general matter. Most of the time, but not when the Attorney General has granted authority to a U.S. attorney to do what he thinks is best. And in a turf battle, a tax Ms. division Mr. approves Chairman, changes. Mr. Chairman, point of order. I mean... I, 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 rem I recall time, my colleague time is having a minute and a half of additional time. Gentlemen's time has expired. Back. The uh, um, chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Attorney General Garland, thank you first and foremost for your public service and your dedication to justice. Uh, I'm delighted to see you here today. Thank you for appearing before us. Uh, I represent El Paso, Texas, a community right on the U.S.-Mexico border. And so we have been witnessing firsthand the abuses uh, at the hands of Governor Greg Abbott through Operation Lone Star, which began in 2021. He, Governor Abbott has deployed state resources and Texas National Guards members to the state's border with Mexico. And Operation Lone Star has created border management challenges. It's resulted in countless humanitarian and due process violations for migrants. It's harmed guardsmen assigned to the mission. It's cost the state billions of dollars, and it has completely undermined the federal government's authority over immigration. Uh, I sent you a letter, my colleagues and I from, uh, Democratic colleagues from Texas sent you a letter in July about Abbott's floating barriers. I know that that is now going, that that case is going through appeal. But we have also learned that the National Guard shot uh, a, a guardsman shot uh, a cr at a Mexican national across the Rio Grande. And in September, on September 1st, I sent you a letter asking that the DOJ investigate that. We also know that Governor Abbott, we've learned from whistleblowers, that he has ordered National Guardsmen to prevent migrants from turning themselves in to CBP, has even ordered that they push people back into Mexico. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to unanimous consent to enter into the record an El Paso Times article from earlier this week. Texas National Guard orders hundreds of asylum seekers on U.S. territory back into Mexico. No objection. Um, th this, in addition to uh, Governor Abbott separating fathers from their children and their families, it's just, it's egregious what is happening uh, on the border via Operation Lone Star. Attorney General Garland, are you able to speak to any responses the department has had to Governor Abbott's blatant undermining of federal immigration authority? Um, I can obviously speak on the boys question. Uh, when uh, um, we brought um, suit um, under the Rivers and Harbors Act uh, for the interference with navigable waters, um, that case is still under adjudication in the district court. I understand that. There are um, other issues. I want to make sure I flag them for you today at this hearing, um, but would also uh, like for your folks to take a close look at the investigation that I've requested. Um, and I will be sending a follow-up letter after what we've learned uh, just this week from the El Paso Times. Thank you. Switching gears, um, I do want to offer you an opportunity for some rebuttal because what we've seen from some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is their penchant for performance uh, for Twitter and for other news programs. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, we've heard a lot of accusations regarding some U.S. attorney's offices not partnering with Mr. Weiss and hypotheticals about what that means. Can you please explain the difference between partnering with a U.S. attorney's office and acting as a special attorney or special counsel? Um, yeah, I can talk about it, obviously, in, in the abstract and the theoretical. Um, uh, it's a normal process of the department if um, prosecutors from one area of the country and, need, and has a case that has um, uh, uh, significance in, an, uh, in another um, to speak with the U.S. attorney in the other district, um, to find out what the policies of the district are, to find out what the practices are, to see how judges in that district react to different kinds of charges. 
Um, sometimes a um, um, decision is made to partner together in those investigations, um, and sometimes a decision is made for um, the U.S. Attorney from the other district to have uh, uh, his or her own people bring those cases. I have personally been involved in, I think, three uh, uh, ca those cases during the period when I was an assistant U.S. attorney. Um, and over my entire career, I have been given 515 authority twice myself uh, for this purpose. It is, not a, it, it is just a mechanical question of uh, um, what courts require um, in order to make an appearance. Thank you so much, Mr. Garland. Again, appreciate your public service to the American people. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Garland, for being here today.